Excuse me. So, we moved on to Dead Silence, directed by James Juan. Directed by James Wan and starring Ryan Quantin and Donnie Wahlberg. And this this is another this is James Wan film, you know, it says from the writers and director of Shaw. And much like Saw, it has a sort of twist ending to it, which is kind of a yes and no situation for me. Like, yes, I like the twist. No, I don't like how it ends. Because it to me it doesn't make any sense. So oh, by the way, as I'm recording, it's it's one, two, three. So anyway, Dead Silence is about this guy named Jamie Ashton, played by Ryan Quantin. His wife is he receives a mysterious ventriloquist dummy. Shortly afterwards, his wife is found dead. And so he returns to his uh, hometown uh, because his wife was also from there, so they had the funeral there. And he soon discovers that an old urban legend may be connected to his wife's murder. And so, yes. Okay, so first and foremost, I really like this opening scene where you have, they get the package, it's a ventriloquist dummy, its name is Billy, which is also the name of the little dummy in Saw, but, yeah. Uh, and then he leaves to go get the, the dinner, the food, and then she comes back. And then, then, like, something happens, you see her die, whatever, and then he comes back, and you have this, she's covered, and he just pulls it off, and sees the dead body, it's, yeah. Now, one of the big problems I have with this film, strangely enough, because I like him so much in the Saw, in Saw 2, is Donnie Wahlberg. He plays the stereotypical movie cop. He thinks that Jamie's behind it, won't listen to any other theories, he thinks he has his man, so he's not going to question a single thing. I hate that in movie and TV cops. Oh, we think you got him, I don't need to listen to any other theories or any possible leads. No, it's this dude. It goes so far that, like, so, uh, Jamie decides to take his wife's body back home to their hometown so that she can be buried with the rest of her family. And then a cop shows up. Not supposed to leave town. It's very shady. Leaving town. Not a good way to prove you're innocent. I'm like, he had to bury his fucking wife. You, you, what? What do you expect him to do? He had to bring his wife home to be buried with her family. That's why he left. And you think, oh, it's just, you just think, oh, it's a very shady thing to do. Yes, this means he keeps shaving the entire time. So that god awful mustache that he has. And much like most horror movies, the cop doesn't believe him until it's too late and he dies at the end. By the time he actually is able to believe him, it's about time for his death scene. And that's what happens. Um, there's a mystery around this doll. They say the doll belonged to Mary Shaw, which is an urban legend in this town. Beware the voice of Mary Shaw. Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She has no children, only dolls. If you ever see her in your dreams, make sure you never, ever scream. Or she'll rip your tongue out at the seam. According to, to the old man who runs the mortuary, there is a story. Uh, Mary Shaw was a ventriloquist back in the old days. And during one of the shows, one of the little kids pointed out that he could see her lips moving. This would be more believable if we actually saw her lips move. We never want to see her lips move at all. And yet the kid's pointing out, I saw the move! No, you didn't. They were moving! No, they weren't. I, I never get that. It's been done before at movies and TV. Oh, her lips are moving. No, they're not. If you're gonna have someone point out that her lips are moving, actually have their lips moving. 
Shortly after this, though, this causes a, a ruckus. Shortly after this, the kid goes missing. This kid ends up being Jamie's ancestor or great-great-grandfather, which I find it highly unlikely because he went missing as a kid. And he died. So how can he be Jamie's great-great-grandfather? Or great-great-grand-uncle? Great-great-uncle? Maybe it's great great uncle. Hold on, I got itch, won't go away. It makes more sense if it's great great uncle. Maybe it's great great uncle. I don't know. But you know, family connection. Which is why she has a thing for the Ashens. And we find out that well, we we find out through visual clues that she's that the wife was pregnant. And that's why the baby was killed off. That's why she was killed to stop the next generation of Ashen. So he goes back to his hometown. And he reconnects with his father, who I guess had a stroke. He's got a new wife, played by Amber Valletta. I think is her name. Amber Valletta, yes. Uh, and yes, he acts. His father acts very weird. We found out why. We find out why in the twist. Um, although there's part of the twist that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, we'll get there. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's another thing. So, Jamie parries the doll back with the, where it's supposed to. Donnie Wahlberg digs it back up and says, "Oh, you're hiding evidence." No. You know, I know that that looks, I'll admit, that looks kind of sketchy. But, like, what's he doing there? I'm pretty sure this little small town is out of his jurisdiction. So I don't understand why he can't even do anything there. So I'm going to keep an eye on you. There's some creepy visuals in here. I mean, it is James Wan. He knows how to do creepy. And it does work very good. It's just some character moments, especially... Is there's alternate ending and alternate opening in here, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, not so good with Donnie Wahlberg's character. And like I said, he does finally end up believing him because all the dolls that were buried end up back at this house. Which, of course, of course, he thinks it's Jamie that did it, but then he starts believing and he killed he dies because you scream. And I'm gonna point this out very much right now if you scream, then. Mary Shaw will kill you. And that's the very thing to point out. So, he goes back to the... Because he left the doll with the mortician when he went there. And it, it shows up there and he goes back to get it. It shows up where they are at this house where she supposedly lived. And then he goes back to get it. And the guy's wife, who acts weird and tries to hide underneath the thing, uh, he finds out that the mortician is dead, and she says that her that his father, Jamie's father, came and got it. He's bound to a wheelchair, but he came down and grabbed the doll. Now, this is where I call bullshit. Yes, the twist reveals that uh, Mary Shaw is actually Amber Valletta's character, the stepmom. I have wrongfully heard people say that because they're talking about the perfect doll they say that the stepmom is a perfect doll no the stepmom is just a transmogrified mary shaw she's not real she made herself corporeal that's all it is she's not a doll she is mary shaw corporealized that's what it is the perfect doll is the father she can possess the dolls and move them around. The only problem is, Daddy, that wouldn't work. I've always assumed that he's been in a wheelchair because she can't move him because he's too heavy. Like, he, he has to use the wheelchair. But we are shown someone walking in and grabbing the doll. Bullshit. It was the dad. Bullshit. There's no way she could have moved it. But then we find out that it's Mary Shaw, 
you know, the twist. His dad's been a puppet this entire time, and it's revealed to be Mary Shaw. This is where I don't care for the ending. He finds out that his stepmom is Mary Shaw. What's the first thing he does? Scream. Bullshit. We have seen throughout this film that he knows not to scream when she's around. He knows how to control himself so he doesn't scream. No, he wouldn't scream. He would not scream. They just wrote that in because they wanted a quick ending. It's bullshit. The twist is good that it's the that he's a puppet, but for him to just scream because of this, after going the entire film, being able to control that scream, stop himself every time, no. No. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. They wanted a quick and easy ending, and that's why they wrote it in. But if they're going to do that, don't have him actively stop himself from screaming the entire film. And they're teaching himself not to scream at it, just to go, ha 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 Sure, some things can catch you off guard, but... No, I don't buy it. Overall, this movie's pretty good. Um, I liked it better than Clown. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. It's James Wan. He does a very good job with the atmosphere in this film. Uh, specifically, like, with the lighting stuff. Where he's at a hotel and there's this red light that keeps flashing on and on. Much like lights out. And you get this, when, like, dead silence. It's like dead silence. Like, the sound is sucked out. Which is always pretty cool. They don't use it enough, but then again, if they did use it, it would be too much. They use it a lot. So, yeah. I liked how they, how they did it. And, uh, yeah. So, 8 out of 10 for me. What are your thoughts on Dead Silence? Leave comments below. And let's pick up the next one. Which will be a Blue Rizzle. The witch. The witch. This is one I don't know. The witch. Hmm. Um. So yeah, look forward to that. The witch. So what are your thoughts on Dead Silence? Let me in the comments below. Make sure I like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.